Yeah, uh, I live in Hawaii. Uh, how do I know you? How do we know each other? Uh, go abundance. Somebody posting go abundance that you're meeting with people. I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like, I'm not giving up that opportunity to meet with this guy. Oliver. Yep. Yeah, that's the Dude, guy. Dude, Oliver, I met one time. He's like my biggest fan, apparently. I love that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, um, heard, he's getting you a bunch of talks, hasn't he? Well, he has, and I'm grateful. And uh, I find it to be, not to go down a big rabbit hole, but like the reason I started this years ago, I started this years ago just for like, I don't know. I just felt compelled to like, just, I like talking to people and I'm always maybe not astounded, but verified that I'm like, dude, people, even though we have this, we actually don't use this to connect that well with people. And so I'm just like, Hey, I'll talk to people. And people like you are just like, hell yeah, more. I want to talk to people. I'm, I don't know. I don't know what you feel, but like a lot of people are isolated. They feel like, I don't know. They just need people to talk to. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Do I agree with you? Like I spend, I spend a lot of time behind the computer especially set things up and the phone call versus the meeting, just seeing the face is a huge jump. I will never do this over video. I will never do What's this that? over a phone call. It's never going to be a phone call. It's only video. Yeah. It's a huge, like I, I, I'm dabbling in coaching and it's a huge difference. Like I don't want to coach people on the phone cause I don't, I can't see their reactions. I can't see if they're listening or if they're doing 14 other things. It's, it's very different. So I love this. I love, person to person, like belly to belly, as they say, but you know, can't always do that. Cause I can't just fly to Hawaii on a whim. You know, I love to, Where do you but live? I can't Massachusetts. So it's a, that'd be a long way for me. Uh, yeah. True that. Uh, well, dude, it's good to meet you. Who are you? Tell me your story. What are your hopes and dreams? So Jason, Massachusetts, right? I was a W2 former W2 person, corporate America. Got laid off at one point in time, always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Just had bought a house when I got laid off. And I was like, oh shit, what am I gonna do? Contacted my real estate agent and said, hey dude, what's, what's the real estate world really like? Like, what's it like to be an agent? I don't want this HGTV crap. I wanna know what it's like. So she sat down and talked to me. Um, I ended up joining their team, worked in real estate for, as an agent, well, I'm still an agent technically, but really worked full time as an agent for three plus years on a team, solo agent, built a team, then started investing. I met at a flipper, helped him out, sweat equity, you know, and then he taught me how to flip. So I flipped for two years. From there, I started getting the short-term rentals. I now own a short-term rental management company. I'm syndicating, mot syndicating a motel with someone and I'm starting my own coaching business for short-term rentals. Last year, probably a year, actually about a year and a half ago, it really was a big turning point for me from doing what should be done um, and just busting my ass constantly and not caring about everything else in life, like mental state, health, everything like that, into actually incorporating all that crap and that stuff that I need to do into my life that makes me happy. So that's a big shift Hang for me is actually- I yeah. love that you caught yourself just there and you're like doing all that crap. Nope, stuff. No, it's, that's the- Yeah, I love that you caught yourself because you're like, that's the important stuff. Yeah, it's the old, like, I, isn't that like the old you, like, sneaking in stuff? And you're like, no, not old you. Stop that. Because that's, no, that's the important No, stuff. but I love that you you cognizantly, consciously, actively, oh, I knew what you were saying, but you caught yourself. I just want to, I'm sorry to cut you off your flow, but, like, that yeah, was just so no, important to me. I love I, that. I like hearing that because, you know, you, you can, I can drop into the old state occasionally. So I've been focusing, trying to focus my life, you know, more around that while trying to build things, which is part of the question we're going to have you later. And, you know, I did my first journey. I did an icky guy last year and a few other things that got me from the point of going, you know, coaching and helping people, which I felt was my path in life it was always five years from now, five years from now, five years from now to being now, right? I'm worthy. I can do this. So I'm finally launching that. And I feel like I'm feel happy. I feel motivated. I feel energized to be on this path now. And I'm building my life around the way I want it to be to a point, right? The money has to come in still. But that's kind of a high level, 10,000 foot overview of you know, my business life. Dude, I love it. You don't need me. No, um, I always need advice from people. Nobody knows everything, man. Yeah, I don't know if I'm good at advice. I am good at perspective. Um, or just, you know, I, I, it's so funny. I, I used to do this for real estate. And now I'm like, I call it like real estate a little bit, but it's not always real estate. What I think it is, this is so crazy. I wonder if you'll like this. I feel like you will understand and appreciate this. I feel like what I'm doing is public therapy in a weird way. 
just like, hey, do you need a sounding board? Sometimes people need a freaking friend and sometimes people need business advice and sometimes people just need to bounce ideas off of somebody and like, I'm super good at that. So, um, that is good. Dude, uh, I, like that. I, I love that story. I think there's a lot of people who are in W2 jobs that they're addicted to the complacency. They don't think they can do something else and getting fired or quitting a job that you're not get ready to get fired or quit from and just going off on your own and, and like, if nothing else, you find out I didn't starve to death. I can get another job. Like it sort of works out. It gives you like some sort of like, oh, I wasn't as glued to that. I didn't need that as much as I thought. So maybe I can do something else. Even though, like you said, it's slow. Like I've gone off on my own. I've had W dues. I've gone off my own. I've had W twos. I've I've done a bunch of real estate. I I I'm in a weird quagmire right now where I'm like, you know, I got to figure out how to make a little bit more money. I have a lot going on. I certainly don't have it all figured out. But like that's life. It's you know, hills and valleys and an upward trajectory. Um, but yeah, I just love that whole story. I resonate with it. And, you know, I think it's motivating to hear people that, you know, like something bad happened and you turned it into maybe one of the best things that change, one of the best trajectory changing uh, moments in your life is what it sounds yeah. like. The fun part, I kind of glossed over. And I think I've seen this with other friends too. And I didn't believe in this whole thing before, but now I do the whole universe. Sometimes it gives you a kick in the ass. So like it's something I've always wanted to do and not done. And it's, I've had other people do that to me before. It's like, I want to go do this, but you're tied to that job, right? Cause you're scared. And so when I was like, oh, before that I worked in warehousing. I was way up there in warehousing and helped Nike start a warehouse. I helped TJX start their online business, the warehouse, their warehouse there. So I had a great resume, but I couldn't get a job anywhere. Like no one would hire me. I'm like, my resume rocks. I'm like a good interview in my mind, right? But no one hired me. Before I took that as like, what the hell? Now I take it as, you know, something was telling me, this ain't your path, man. Like you shouldn't be going down this path. So. The universe, bro, the universe, I, I'm a student of philosophy quite a bit actually. I think people get tripped up on language, certain words, symbols. Um, some people say the universe, some people say God. I don't know that they're that different. Uh, nor do I think it's that important, but nor do I believe in anything spiritually like foo-foo or like magic, but do the universe, the, the universe has a way of, like you said, creating a path, um, beating you up if you don't take the path, uh, and sort of like, you know, it, life becomes very hard when you don't walk, do the thing you're supposed to do. I don't know what you want to call it. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it karma. You can call it dharma, uh, the word dharma, your, your, your word way. Um, but anyways, yeah. I love that. Yeah. The universe definitely has a, has a sort of annoying way of getting you to do what it wants. And that's not always, it's hard. Cause sometimes you think you want something that you're not supposed to do. And you're like, I want to do that. And you're like, the universe is like, no, it's just going to make the mud thicker and thicker till you can barely move that direction. Dude, I've done some, I've done some things. I'll give you an example. I've yeah. been doing these, um, calls with strangers for about five years. I love them. They fill my cup. People sign up all the time. I, I, I'm actually busier now than I've ever been, even though I took, a, I took about a year and a half break, but I started this in 2000 and it's always been full. I've always loved it, right? I always get like great friendships and relationships. I've gotten business partners. Like it's been very productive for me. And yet on the side, what I keep doing is trying to start a podcast because I love talking to people. So I'm like, oh, I should turn this into a podcast. Yeah. I fail four times. Four times I've like officially started, launched, created graphics, like hired people, like created a podcast and four times it's failed. Always for the same reasons, because uh, it's logistically difficult to get guests, talk about one thing. Like it just becomes this big production nightmare. This incredibly light. Yeah. It feels so light to me. And it's the same thing. It's like me talking to people trying to help however I can help. So it's the universe being like, Alex, don't do what everybody else is doing. The podcast where you have to interview somebody. Just you want to talk to people, talk to people. And guess what? People will sign up because the universe. <laughs> yeah, they have. I started. Yeah. I just started a podcast too. My first non-solo episode came out and mine's basically, I'm trying to talk to entrepreneurs probably around a million dollar net worth. Uh, people, it's basically people around my stature. Um, to speak to starting up entrepreneurs and struggling entrepreneurs to show them that like, dude, we went through some shit. You're going through some shit now. You can get through it. And these are the people who have gotten through it and these are kind of the how. The goal is to show them that there's other people in the world that this has happened to and kind of give them a tribe. 
that's around them to see like what's hey, it called i can do this man it's called empire expanders love that name yeah uh so basically the goal what i do with the people i just started it my nightmare is like right now i have because of abundance i have about a year's worth of people in, in the banks to talk to which is nice after that yep. hopefully you can keep it full because i my part my va is finding people for me but yeah that's my Good. nightmares logistically just hunting people down to try to get on my podcast what i do on the podcast yep. i ask people to be open and we figure it's just supposed to be like a chat um talk about where you are and then we talk about you know where you started and then wherever it goes from there we find something to dig into where you had a stumbling block and we just go down that path um Hey, don't, uh, I've done this for all. Do you know that I, I started the, I produced the Better Life with Brandon Turner podcast? Do you know that's what I do? I do. So yeah. I, I have, I just told you I failed for a podcast, but I'm going to give you some unsolicited advice about this anyways. <laughs> all day. You are right to, I want to choose my words carefully here. You are right to stress about the logistics problem because it's hard, but you are wrong to stress about it now. You said, I have 52 people in the pipeline. Don't stress till you get to about 42. Because what, what I worry is going to happen is um, if you continue to do the show and you enjoy it and you have help already, like a VA, and people enjoy it and you, in that, in that 42 weeks, you're going to get a lot more people who want to be on the show. You're going to be louder about sharing it. People will sign up and you'll collect a lot more names. And so okay. I don't want you to stress today about something that yeah. might be easily solved then, and it's just wasted energy. That's good. Yeah, because my, my big stress would be if we, within like, you know, I'm like, oh shit, who's next week? I don't get somebody for next week. That's what I'm scared of. Yeah, so this right here, this little thing that I put this link out to, I get 12, I do 12 30 minute calls a week. Wow. I'm gonna, by the end of the year, I'm gonna be releasing one a day. So you're gonna be fine. But right now, I understand why you're stressing, but like, there's just so many opportunities for you to like, um, for you to share and be like, hey, I'm looking for people who, you know, want to talk to the story and podcast, which is millions and millions and millions of people that would be a great guest for you. So, mm -hmm. and, and think about it. You could literally go to all your previous guests and be like, can you help me find a guest that's, you know, maybe as good as you share this link, share this, you know, sign up form. Put it on a website, like, yeah, like dude. There's no shortage of there's there's no shortage. So I wouldn't I wouldn't I would stress about that when the time is correct. That's all. Yeah, right now we're trying to hit up anyone that's done there when they're after they're done taping. We send out an email thanking them and asking that they to give us three names and emails of people that may want to be on the show. It'll work. We're putting that together. also. Also, you can do things like go on Google and search for podcasts that are similar to yours get those guests and then do active outreach and be like, Hey, we heard you on this show. We'd love for you to tell, you know, a variation of that story. Or we heard you talk about this. If you want to get really granular, we heard you talk about this piece and we want to hear more about that. That's a guarantee. Anybody would say yes. They're like, Oh, that person already listened to my story and wants to hear more about something specific instead of just like, can you tell the same story again? That'll work. So, yeah. All I'm saying is like, there's a ton of outreach mechanisms. There's a ton of guest collection mechanisms that you haven't thought of, tried, implemented anything yet. So I understand why it's a worry because it's a production logistic. It is a hurdle. But if you said you have 52 guests in the can right now, just mm -hmm. focus on getting those guests through, you know, keep at building the, keep, like you said, asking for referrals, keep adding the list. But like, if you get in a pinch, dude, text me, we can get you guests. Like, no problem. This is, I'm a super okay. connector. So that's good. Cool. Yeah. yeah I, um, it's not getting me anything right now. Um, for any of the businesses, but I love doing it. It's just having these conversations with these guests. It's just so fun. Just, yeah. You're an extrovert about, like, like me digging in, hearing things. It's fun. What's that? You're an extrovert like me. Yeah. At times I'm extroverted in small crowds. I'm introverted in large crowds. I, oh, like, that's so be interesting. Be I, be be oh, I love, um, I love conferences. I'm a certified conference junkie. Um, in, in the great Gatsby, he says this quote that I love. He goes, I love big crowds. They're so intimate. I love big parties. They're so intimate. And the idea is it's like, when I go to BPCon, I don't talk to 2,500 people. 
at a time. I talk to yeah. 2,500 people, one or two or three people at a time. So I'm always in like a tiny little crowd and I just bounce around. That's how I do it. I understand that it's like, can be very daunting. I'm not trying to change your mind about anything, but just that different approach. I, what I, where I struggle is like groups of seven to like 15. There's this weird group of set of group of people, seven to 15 that I just struggle because it's like too small to break off in a group. And it just ended up being like one table of 10 people having one conversation and everybody else is just a passenger for whoever else is talking. And it just drives me crazy. Yeah. I typically, I, when I'm at large conferences, I find a small group or a group of people that I will grab, gravitate and get a deep connection with to take away rather than a whole lot of people yeah. also a weird thing like those like walk into a room of 60 people that i don't talk much but i've spoken in front of rooms of 60 people and i have no problem with that it's diff it's weird that that is it's different but it's much easier to be up in front of the room than in the crowd yeah yeah these are all good things to know about oneself uh i think social dynamics are it is very valuable for you to understand where you're strong and where you're weak because then you can put yourself in a lot of positions where you're strong. And that's, 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 yeah, that's valuable. You know, you, know where, you, you know where you can be. Like I actually, my future and my vision, I want to be in front of the room speaking. Yeah. So I don't have if, that mapped out as to, as to what, where, when, like, you know, all that stuff yet. But I know that's something I want to do in the future. Yeah. So like I'm speaking tonight at a small event about short-term rentals. I've spoken about my journey that I gave you the five second overview of and like an hour, I give them an hour long overview and the things I've learned from it. I just talked to a guy yesterday who's in Salem or outside of Salem and he does short term rentals. Who was it? Uh, Chris Mers. Chris is in my pod. He's in color. He's across the country from me. Is he? See, I need to. Yeah. Okay. Hold up. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, he's in Washington or something. Yeah. I talked to a bunch of, I told you, I talked to a lot of people. I'm trying to get better at this. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Um, Alex Stieg. Alex Stieg. Let me write that down. I don't think, I, I don't think I've met him yet. Let me introduce you guys. Yeah. He's in your, sort of in your sphere. He's like, yeah, he's uh, about an hour away. I go there once a year. Yeah, I got to get a, so, yeah, I mean, not to go off on a tangent, but like one of the things that I do is I'm a super connector. So one of the things I do is try to get, I mean, a little bit of your information. So I'm like, oh, he's, a, he's got a podcast. Oh, he does short-term rentals. Oh, he lives in Massachusetts. Like these little data points. And then I have this CRM. Mm -hmm. And it's new, but I'm trying to get it. So I'm like, who else? Like Massachusetts, who else? Boom. And I'm like, can I introduce these people really quickly and easily? But it's, it's, I'm still trying to work out the kinks of that. I would love to be there someday. I connect people, but I'm not a super connector. Like, I, I, well, that's what I'm trying to like. Book. Have you read the book of Go Giver? I have, but in that book. Yeah, I have. Yeah, there's the connector in that book. I'm always like, I like that guy because he just, like, there's, there's two, there's this thing out there that can't be done. There's two people that could do it, but can't do it alone. And he goes, bink, now it gets done. I'm like, I love that. That is my, do that. that is my, dude. Dude, I love that. Yeah, I can't, I, that, that's part of what I do here. I'm like, who are you? How can I help? I, I can't do, I'm not gonna yeah. be able to, I'm not, Jason, I'm not that useful. But I know a lot of people that are useful. I, I know a lot of people that are useful and I'm like, this is who you should be friends yeah. with. The guy, Alex Stieg, I'll send you an email. Okay. Him and you are doing the same -y, similar thing. He wants to buy um, hotels and convert them and he's already like in construction so he's done it and he wants to do short term rental management and he um, and he's in your area so I don't know if you guys are competitors but probably more like collaborators so yeah. I don't believe that, I don't believe too much in competition there's enough out there like if he was directly in Conway yeah it might be a problem. it might be a little bit different but I'm not in Salem I base my short term rental management business that I manage is Conway Tamworth that's an hour from there it's a whole different ball game yeah um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, connecting wise, like some people have a problem with it, but I don't mind being the person behind the people that did the, did, did the thing. Like, you guys, here you go, you go do the thing, I connected you, I'm fine with it. That's how I am. I, I gotta start getting paid for it. Now yeah, when I send emails, I'm, I'm like, man, wait, say it again? I know some people do that, they're like, hey, I connected you, give me like a 5% connection fee if you guys do shit, or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, that's what I wanna do. I just start sending my emails, I'm like, if you guys didn't make any money, you send me 5%. <laughs> yeah. Remember the man that connected you? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I, that's hard to track and scale. Yeah, and yeah. it also creates a little bit of like, I don't know. I the problem I have with it is I genuinely want to help. So I'm like 
I'm kind of of the opinion, and this has not always worked out for me, so this is, don't take this advice. I'm still figuring yeah. out if this is going to work, but my, my sort of approach is like, all I do in life is I make deposits into the favor bank. I'm like, let me connect Alex and Jason and ask for nothing. You guys go off, maybe you make money, whatever. I don't get anything. Fine. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, there's goodwill there. And someday, you know, the universe will repay. That's my goal. I don't want to yeah, take 5%. That's kind of why I do things too. Like yeah, something I don't will take come 5%. back instead of nickel yeah. and diming. Like you're going to connect, one, somebody's going to call you one day or something's going to come back. Or you're going to talk to someone on these podcasts, these things, and you're, like, you're going to be like, you know what? We should do something together. Dude, I bought a 24 unit with a guy who I met on here, and then, I met, and then we bought a 52 unit together as well. Damn. Direct from this. That's crazy. So what, yeah. what is your ambitions, goals, and stuff like that? I know you produce a podcast now. You're a real estate investor. Like, what do you want to do, man? So I'm a photographer. Oh, cool. Yeah, pretty good one. At least, at least it looks like a, it looks, at least it looks like I know what I'm doing. Um, that Canon. That's a Canon. I'm a photographer and I'm a real estate investor, and I'm trying to find ways to mix these two. So I go to, I shoot Bigger Pockets conference. I'm the photographer for that event. I shoot a lot ah, of. Um, so I've seen you years ago. Yeah. So yeah. So I shoot a lot of events. I love that, and that like. You know, that'll make me 50, 60 grand a year, you know? Wow. That's not bad. Um, which, is, which is okay. It's also, I'm not going to get rich on 50, 60 grand a year, even though I love it. And so, but, but what it does is it gets me, I get to a lot of conferences. I get a lot of networking time. So right now, I know you said you were raising money. I am partnering up with a group in New Jersey who I really like. I've known him for five or six years. We just did a deal together. And so I'm trying to work out the kinks. I'm trying to raise some money with them. I am really focused on trying to build communities right now. I don't, I have an idea of where this is going, but, um, you know, I built the better life tribe with Brandon Turner. I'm in a, a, a mastermind for military veterans called the war room. I mean, I know you're in GoBundance, but there's something, there's an Alex version of that, that I'm mm-hmm. not exactly sure what it looks like, but so community building, um, definitely want to buy more real estate. But I don't have any way to like ask you to in- include you in that right now. I'm looking for passive investors. Um, yeah, I don't. And I don't have, my money's right now. My money's yeah. trickling down as I'm building businesses up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not asking, but you're asking me what I'm looking at. And then the other thing is, yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to move to Austin here pretty soon. So what I yeah. really like is, I really want everybody to know in their head, Alex and Austin. Alex and Austin. I want those two terms to go together. So when you hear Austin, you think of me, and when you hear the name Alex, yeah. you think of Austin. I'd love that because that'll pay off in dividends if I can just plant that seed. I'll end up seeing you then because they have, GoBundance has a lot of Austin events. Yeah, they're doing one in There's May. One in I, might, I might go. I might not. I don't know yet. That'd be cool. I mean, you're, talking, you're probably talking to a bunch of us because of Oliver there. Chris yeah, well, I also, know, I also know David Green and I are friends. He's going to be there, obviously. And yeah. uh, I think Brian Lubin is going to be at that one. There's a lot of people that I'm like, damn, I really want to go to that event. But I think the yeah, Better Life Brandon's event is that same. too, isn't he? Who? I think Brandon Turner's go abundance too. Yeah, but he's not gonna be there. Yeah, he's a busy boy. Um, yeah, he's fancy. Yeah, the big, creating a tribe like that is awesome. Like because I'm being part of that tribe has changed a lot for me. Just being around those people. So if you dude, same like that, you can change lives. Yeah, and so I'm just trying to find how to do it my way. I don't want to do it just another thing, and I also don't really want it to do, to make money, but I want to. And I don't want to just start another one for the sake of it. So I'm trying to like, I have a little small group that's growing and I'm like, how can I make sure that we get just the right people for this group to accomplish a certain goal? So working all those yeah. things out. But I think one of the things I'm going to do, actually, I'd be curious. This, this affects you. I got three more minutes. This is, this is something I'd be curious about. Okay. One of the things that I have a problem with is if I want to connect you and my friend Alex, I have to remember who it is, right? I have to go write an email. Maybe you see it. Maybe you don't. Whatever the case. What I'm thinking about doing is just starting a free private WhatsApp group and that everybody that I talk to from here, I just say, hey, I'm going to add you. You don't have to do anything. But that way, very easily for me, I can go on there and just be like, hey, Alex and Jason, you guys need to know each other. Here's why, blah, blah, blah. And that allows me to connect people better. Um, I don't know. What would you think about that? Um, it'd be cool to get to know a lot of people. My concern would be the amount of notifications. I think my notifications shut off for that thing. Because yeah, everybody you can tr- talking in there. You can t- turn your notifications off. The only thing I would say, I actually, yeah. that's, that's a good feedback. Even if I said, hey, only if I tag you. You know, if you put people in there, the technology savvy, but hey, I'm putting you in this group. Do me a favor. Turn off notifications only, only if you're tagged. Have it, have it notify you. 
I only want to exactly use it. How I only want to use it as a way to connect people that I already know can to you, be like. I don't know WhatsApp settings. Can you set it so only you can type in there? Like, can you set up a WhatsApp group that says only Alex can respond in this group? No one else can type. I wouldn't want that. No, I do want people to communicate, but I don't want you to have yeah. to feel obligated. So if you want to turn your notifications off, yeah. I'm like, go for it. But I want a place. Anyways, this is good feedback. But that's my thought. My thought was like, if I had a group where, hey, yesterday you and Alex, and I'm like, but also Blake, my buddy Blake does short-term rentals. So I introduced them. So I'm like, can I just, instead of sending separate emails, all this stuff, I'm like, what if there's just one place where all the people that I know are in one group and I can just, anyways, I haven't done it. That's why I'm asking you. What about going with the old school Facebook group? Just get everybody to talk to in a Facebook group. Um, yeah, I thought about that. I guess that you that will get lost. WhatsApp will be more front and center, right? Facebook can get lost in the Facebook spam of notifications. Yeah. Anyways, I'm not, I, I haven't done anything with it yet. I'm just thinking about thinking out loud. I think on the right track is just finding the right software to do it. Like, which what is the best one? Do you do you yeah. use WhatsApp? I use WhatsApp and Slack. Slack I use for my business. Slack. Uh, WhatsApp I use. Slack stuff. is expensive. <laughs> I, have, I have a free version. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. One's free. But what? Yeah, what? I like Slack because you can make channels. Like I have an operations channel, a VA channel. WhatsApp has that now. Oh, they do. That's good. Yeah, that's what they have a community, so it's like you can do sub communities and all that stuff. So that's why I'm like, I don't know. Oh, that'd be that'd be nice. I think you're. I love the track you're on. Just just figure out the execution of it. Yeah, I'm thinking about easier. it. I haven't done it yet because I got some other things in to work with some other folks that are like, we want to start a community together. I'm like, I don't want to just go off and I, I have a tendency. I'm a, uh, I'm a, a, if you've ever taken the Colby personality test, I'm a quick start. Like, I'm just the person I'm like, oh, yeah. let's just start a, per we'll just start one and we'll just invite everybody and I'll just go. And then next thing you know, I'm like, oh, well now I have this mess that, you know, there's no organization or ops, but I'm good at just getting something on the, on the, into the world. Yeah, I'm rapid. I'm rapid too, um, which is the problem. Like, yeah, it's just a make sure it's your, like, I guess, I don't know, unsolicited advice from me. It's your, something I get lost in and why, why I'm kind of bringing it up is it's your community. It's your vision. Make sure it doesn't get lost in someone else's vision if they come in to help you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have pretty good help now, so it's, and getting better, so. Um, all right, my dude, what else do you need from me? Anything? Nah, man. I just want to have a good conversation with a good person. Dude, well, you nailed it. I did. <laughs> Alexander the Great. Dude, tremendous to meet you. Let's stay in touch. Yeah, man. Good to meet you. I will. I got your info. I think, right? Yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah and I'll uh, I'll like email it. you with. I'll I'll introduce you to um, my my buddy Alex. Cool. I'll keep this around somewhere so I can jump on these chats every so often. For sure. Yeah. Hey, um, I'm gonna stop the recording, but hang tight so it can finish uploading.